This video is brought to you by Channel Grim and Grinch, own Screams from the Crypt. 20 tales of horror, sci-fi, and suspense. Available now. Hello, I'm Grim Grindle, and welcome to this video. Well, with the FTC bearing down upon us, and copper going into effect in less than a month, and almost every single video, including this one, soon to be purged from this website, well, I figure, what better time than to start a new series called Beginner's Luck. And so what is Beginner's Luck, I hear you ask, curiosity swelling? Well, the basic premise of the show is to take on bosses from games with only the stats that the character had at the beginning of the game. Or at least within reason, obviously if you need to unlock moves and ability to get that far into the game, I've done so because otherwise it's impossible, but keeping it literally as much as it is at the beginning as is humanly possible. And it is that very same basic premise that has seen me to this point here, fighting Gruntilda with only the five honeycombs you start with a game, and without unlimited eggs, without unlimited feathers, and without the red honeycombs. When you're usually doing this final showdown, you'll have eight honeycombs, and if you've done well enough in a game, you'll have unlocked the red honeycombs, which takes your number up to 16, as each honeycomb will take two, not one hit. So, suffice to say, going into it with only the five honeycombs you start the game with is definitely leaving you ill-prepared. I chose Gruntilda as the first boss in Beginner's Luck for two main reasons. Firstly, being that there is a few of you who follow this channel who have some passing familiarity with the Banjo-Kazooie franchise. But more importantly, I chose it because I recently played through Banjo-Kazooie on this channel as the Wash and Try Challenge, which made me look really bad at the game. And I swear, I'm not that bad at the game, I'm pretty okay at it, it's really just the washer dryer, it handles weirdly, it has weird hit detection I swear, so here's me proving that I'm actually okay at Banjo Kazooie. And I was actually kind of surprised how easy it was to get this far in the game with only 5 honeycombs. I think I only died twice in the game, once was in Gruntilda's lair, when I fell to my death in the lava, and the other time, which was actually a few times, was it during Gruntilda's board game. So those were the only two times I ran into trouble while playing this game, and I barely count either of them, because they both give you instant death, and there's not really much skill involved. So only two places I really died, until this battle. I think that anyone who's ever played Banjo-Kazooie would fully agree that there is a major challenge difference between the actual game itself and the final battle against Gruntilda. Grunty is a really hard adversary, and even with your full honeycombs, she's no pushover. So going in with only five honeycombs, well, it's definitely not an easy task, and I think I died about six times. It is a pretty cruel challenge, as it comes in five different stages, and regardless of which stage you fail, you've got to go all the way back to the beginning and start again. As you might have noticed, I got pretty darn good at stage 1 and stage 2. Practice makes perfect after all, or near perfect, I still did take 1 damage. Though in the previous attempt, I didn't actually take any damage in these two stages, so practice makes worse, I guess. Either way, the first two phases of this challenge, where she swoops at you and you peck her when she stalls, and when you shoot eggs at her on the wall, are pretty much pushovers. They're not really difficult at all, and I had no real trouble with them from the beginning. It's stage 3 and onwards though, where it gets a little bit tricky. You see, stage 3, the stage on the screen right now, the aerial combat stage, is just probably the cruelest stage of all five in which you fight Gruntilda. You see, in order to hurt her, you have to dive bomb her, but if you miss her and hit the ground, chances are you're going to bounce off and fall to your death. Which, you know, I guess right now isn't the best time to say that, as what I just did is not the best example to back up what I said, but I swear, the chances are, if you do what I just did, you're not going to luckily hit the lip and not fall to your death, usually you do totally bounce and fall to your death. Although, come to think of it, instantly dying is probably even more infuriating when you have lots of health left, rather than if you have barely any to begin with, so maybe this stage, stage 3, is less cruel when doing the beginner's luck 5 honeycomb challenge than it is when you're playing the game regularly, so I guess I'll give it a pass here. And also I can't really complain too much, as while attempting this beginner's luck challenge, I only failed the challenge once while on this stage, so maybe it's not really that difficult after all, 
which is probably a good time to move straight along to the fourth stage in which you have to free the Jinjo statues. This stage is not that difficult, or at least compared to the two stages that sandwich it, it's not that difficult really. I mean, I'll still almost always take a hit during it or two, but as long as I've not completely screwed up stages 1 through 3, it's not going to present much of a challenge. It's sort of the stage where you take a bit of a breather, manage to wipe some of the sweat off of your hands, and get prepared for the far more difficult but relatively similar fifth stage that follows. You can actually do it far better than I do here, by timing your shooting the eggs at the statues to when the previous statue you freed has hit Gruntilda and so therefore has put a break in her attack cycle. I don't do it here though, because it is at this point, 2 in the morning, I've already failed the challenge 5 or 6 times and I really, really, really am just trying to get it done as quickly as possible because it's starting to really annoy me. So, you know, whatever, it's sloppy, but it gets the job done, stage 4 complete, and we're on to stage 5. This final stage is just brutally difficult. It is the one in which you have to free the Great Gingernator, and you do so by essentially doing exactly what you did in the fourth stage, except all of the four holes you're shooting into are of the same statue, rather than being of four different statues scattered across the arena. The best technique to approach the challenge with is to avoid all of her red fireballs and then use your golden feather for her green homing one and then between surviving her green homing one and her charging up for her next volley of attack, shoot as many eggs into the hole as you can possibly do. Though despite that being the best technique and me knowing that's the best technique, actually executing that as the best technique is not exactly that easy. It's really got a lot of timing, and Gruntilda is surprisingly accurate with her red fireballs, and even the green ones are not that easy to avoid, as even though you use your golden feathers, you really have to be careful to use them at only the last second, as if you're using them too liberally, you're going to run out of them, and if you don't have golden feathers for the green fireballs, you're pretty much entirely screwed. And I mean even further, at this point, your adrenaline is really pumping quite hard. You'll notice a few seconds ago I just zoomed in accidentally, and because that's really just what this Gruntilda final showdown is like, it's a real heart pounder, and you really don't want to have to start the challenge again, especially when five of the times you failed, it was on this final stage. And so with just one honeycomb left, one second away from death, I managed to land those last faithful eggs, free the great Gingernator, and defeat the evil Gruntilda with only five honeycombs. And so there you have it, the first episode of Beginner's Luck done and Gruntilda defeated. If you enjoyed this and would like to see more, be sure to like, share and comment, there will be, as I said, at least five more episodes, but we really are just trialing these new shows, so whether or not we make more after these initial six is really dependent on how well they're actually received. I mean, heck, if we do end up making more episodes past these six, and there's a certain boss you'd like to see me go up against, why not leave that below in the comments, or tweet it at me on Twitter, or mention it in the Channel Grimming Grin Discord, link to both of those, available in the description below. And while you're in the description below, make sure to check out the link to Grin's new book, Screams from the Crypt. But with all of that said and done, as always, thanks for watching, and I have been, still am, Grim Grindle. Screams from the Crypt as heard by Darkwell Bled. Twenty tales of horror, sci-fi, and suspense. Available now.